Don't do it. Pew pew. Pew pew. Ooh. You're what? peeing now to the. Yeah, the. Do you hear the little bee? It's cool. Uh, welcome like into Bee Movies. The techno bee. It is a good bee. I love it. Uh, it is episode 298. It's Ryan. It's Peter. That's me. Ryan's the other one. And, and it's me, and Peter's the other one. That's right. I'm sure everyone got it now. And we are B Movies and Beyond. That's us. Come. <laughs> That's right. Ryan, how you Anybody doing? Oh, I'm good, man. Just been a lot of stuff going on. You know, dude. It's I just. <laughs> Yeah, as we get closer to the end of the year, man, I feel like there's this, it's nonstop, right? Everything is so jam-packed up your butthole, it's not even funny. It's like, next week is Thanksgiving. Last week was like this meeting, and this meeting, and people want to get together for holidays. Blah, yeah. blah, blah. And blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. And yeah, you gotta and, travel. And blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and I don't know about your butthole, but mine's not that big. It can't hold that much. Mine is not that big, and I've seen yours. And yours is like, yeah, yeah. We have poured tiny. wax down your butt. Yeah, it's tiny. <laughs> That's right. No wax got up my butthole because it's so tiny. <laughs> there is actual video proof of that. Uh, that was a good night. <laughs> that was uh, good. I think I think Halloween is like the last good relaxing weekend for a while. You know, Halloween weekend or yeah, Halloween weekend. It's like one of those like. We're going out to party. It's not like you have these certain obligations. I mean, your obligations are to go out and party. So, I mean, I think it's a little bit different for you compared to me because, you know, you when you have kids, uh, it changes things. Um, That's true. This like hollow. That was the first Halloween we actually went trick or treating, and that was a whole new experience for me. Where wasn't used to that. I'm used to what you're doing, and. Let's just go out and party. This year we had to find a babysitter. You know, it's it's not as easy as it once was, but uh, it's still a good time. And and now, yeah, it is just nonstop the rest of the year because, like you said, next week is fucking Thanksgiving already. I was looking at calendar. I was blown away by that. And then it's going to be Christmas. And then it's going to be Christmas. And then it's going to be New Year's. And then it's going to be my birthday. And then everybody's going to be wiped out. Then we'll have Nicolas Cage month and everything will be great. Um, hey Peter. Yes. Um Hey, actually, I gotta let's go for it. <laughs> what? Help! I have so many questions. Is this a different question than I would put down? No, I I was gonna have a statement, but then I realized this is more of an off-air kind of statement, which is good news. But like, I don't know how much we should really. Here, I'll just say it. We have okay. a we have our sponsor. We have Man Manscaped, and just meeting some people who want a podcast with us. So, I just really feel that this podcast is starting to really just grow, and it's. And it's going to be right around episode 300, which is where we're going to be like, wow, we're we're big time now. You know, that's all I had to do. You know, you go for like five years and three up ep 300 episodes, and you finally start gaining traction. <laughs> it's time for us to get those tattoos. I think. I thought no, that was ten years. I remember, it's ten years. Where are we at? Eight. Uh oh, man, it was 2015. So. Oh, next year will be eight years. Whoa, we're getting there. Yeah, we're, we're getting so big movies. Close. <laughs> we should do it on air and record when we get tattoos. Uh, yeah, that I mean, that's the only way you can do it. Yeah, otherwise, nobody will know. Anyway, <laughs> we got a quick question, and I like this one. Um, why don't you ask well, this? Yeah. Well, so this is kind of related. I took this actually from our news, and I think we've done this question before, but I think it's it's warranted again, and we might change. But Gears of War, uh, Netflix, Netflix 
I guess owns the rights to it and they're preparing for a movie and an adult animated series for Gears of War. And I think that's really cool news and I'm super excited for it. Hopefully they do a good job with it. But what other video games out there would you like to be like seen made into a movie or series? Streets of Rage. Streets of Rage. Uh, what one is that? Or Battletoads. Battletoads would be a cool animated series. It, but that goes along with our universe where we want the Street Sharks and the Ninja Turtles and the Battletoads to all like have this animal anthropoform. I don't even know how to say that word. That, but you know, anamorphic. Like, no, that's the other thing. No, that's anamorphs. Where they're part human, part animal. Yeah, we want mutants. We want mutant toads. Um, no video game recent one, dude, dude. It, yeah, it's got to be WWE. Have you ever played that game? They should make a real life series about it. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe even make some movies. <laughs> make a couple movies. Do some pay per view events. It would it would translate really well. I think. I think so. I mean, I'm I'm just, the video games. There's so many uh, storylines and with it, it's great. It's like they're capped because it's a video game. Like they should just if they did it live action, like once a week and you know, had paid actors who, yeah. Yeah, I, that's a fantastic idea. <laughs> <laughs> Joking aside, God of War, dude. God of War needs a movie. Ooh, that is, that's good. I like that one a lot. I um, feel like they can, they can do it animated and well enough where it looks like, it, like live action, or they could do live action. But I think with the production value that the game has currently and movie production, it would do it would do awesome. I agree. I, th I think you know, I feel like we're at a time where one of those like mythical movies is should be made. You know, like we had Clash of the Titans, you know, the, the remake of that. Like we got those movies a while back, but it's been a really long time since we got in a. Uh, a mythology film so i think it's i think you're on to something i think it's about it's due time for that and i think watching kratos going around kicking some ass and and you know have a different spin on the gods like that's really cool Dude, I, like and that. I even i heard the new uh game is just like mind-blowing so um it might be my recommendation but i haven't played it yet so i can't really per se well, there, you know. That's just for the new ones, but the old ones were fantastic. I used yeah. to play those. I love those games. It's <sighs> weird how it's been consistently good every single time. Like they haven't had one that flopped. Yeah. Even like Halo had one that flopped, but yeah. God of War just hasn't. It's no, it's good yeah. storytelling, and that's the whole thing, though. It's the same thing why a lot of these other video game movies I feel like flop is because. They're not doing good stories. Like they're trying to just like take what they already done and, and just put it in there. And and I don't think that works. I, I like Uncharted. I think they got a little bit closer, but still they changed it up too much. Like you actually wanted to see those characters, right? You didn't want to see Tom Holland as Nathan Drake. Yeah. Like, it just didn't. and then Mark. <laughs> so maybe it was just mostly casting choices were wrong. The the Mark Wahlberg choice for uh, uh, this, you know, the the main guy, the father figure was just it was all wrong. It was so wrong, dude. Casting choice is key. Like, for example, the new Mortal Kombat, they didn't bring in any big name actors or wrestlers, and I think that made the movie better because. Mortal Kombat's one of those ambiguous, like you could put a character out there, but it, it doesn't need the the face to it. It doesn't need like a big name actor. <clears throat> so let's have a follow up question to God of War: Who would play Kratos? Yeah, I was just literally thinking that uh, the mountain, the mountain from uh, Game of Thrones. Oh, he would be good. Um, that's funny. I said, oh, yeah, they don't need, like, a wrestler or anything. And the first one that popped up was Triple H. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I do think. I think it needs to be a wrestler, man. I'm thinking someone huge, you know? Yeah. 
who would be good for that? Like, there's Braun Strowman. He's he's pretty good, but can he act? I mean, like that's the thing. Is like, dude, Kratos has dialogue. You know, he's not. Yeah, he's not just a big meathead. He has dialogue. Jason Momoa would be pretty good. I could see that. Yeah, uh, I think he's a little bit. He's a little bit too much, in my opinion. Um, just this quick photo I pulled up was a uh, Chris Hemsworth. Um. And then the bald guy from Prison Break, I forgot his name, but he might be pretty good. Um, Dave okay. Bautista was, uh, is lined up to be on Gears of War, so we can't have him. Oh, dude, yeah. Tom, Tom Hardy would be a good Kratos. Yeah, I, I'm i down for that, Tom Hardy. Yeah, Or, or that um, Suicide Squad actor who looked like Tom Hardy. <laughs> Jai Courtney? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> those are all great oh, Kratos. <laughs> I, I think I, I just I need to see them like in the full makeup, you know, to be like, okay, that's the guy, you know. Like well, it, it's it's kind of funny because you know you have Netflix and like uh, we haven't talked about this yet, but uh, like Henry Cavill, he's he's leaving The Witcher, right? Yeah, right after this third season. But like when I look at him and uh, and I get and I think about like the the video game, I feel like he is him, and they're switching it to Liam Hensworth. Like I just that's such a, a odd move, and I I don't think it's gonna work out for him unless the series just somehow gets amazing in that fourth season, which that's what you have to do. Like you have to like go balls to the wall to try to. Uh, make people forget that you switched the actor, but uh, true because that for someone who hasn't watched The Witcher, like me, I haven't watched it. I tapped into it, but like it didn't follow the story, you know. So if I, I'm curious to watch Liam Hemsworth, and if I, it's just balls to the walls, and then it just might change my opinion. But I don't know, man. Like, how do you go from Superman to Thor's brother? Yeah, and that's probably why you had to leave is because of. Superman stuff, <laughs> mm-hmm. I guess. Uh, all right, so I need to pick a move or a video game. Um, man, I had a couple that came to mind. Like, did you ever? Uh, there was a game called End of End of Zoners. End of Zone. Is that it? No, Zone of Enders. That's what it is. You like that one? It was a mech suit game, right? Yeah. 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 Zone of the Enders. Um, I thought that could be cool, but then we're just kind of in the lines with like Gundam and uh, you know, Pacific Rim. Um, but I just, oh. I don't know, flying around. And maybe that's the whole thing. I'm not in control of it, so maybe I wouldn't like it as much. So maybe I take that back. Do you also remember the game Infamous? Where you had like yeah. lightning powers. Oh yeah, that one was cool. Like you were the white version of uh the uh that black character who had lightning in DC. What's his name? Static Shock. Yeah, that guy. Yeah. And I think they're making a static shock movie. So uh Sony get on uh making it infamous to you know try to ride those coattails uh, or maybe get to them first. But like that was a fun, like super futuristic uh I think the plot's pretty it's not like that you know drawn out like i think you could take this concept and easily make a decent film out of it and it'd be fun to watch because this guy is not like he's a, he's an anti-hero so i think you can you have a lot of room to play around with that character and again he just needs to be someone bald so tom hardy can play him again that's <laughs> <laughs> peter you know one game i could suggest for you what's that Metal Gear Solid. But they're already they're already doing that with uh mm-hmm. I think Oscar Isaac is supposed to be the like uh, liquid snake. No, solid snake. Really? Oscar. Yeah. But I you know I'm not on board. Like I, I don't know if we already have some like spy movie type deals, and I know like you know. Um, Metal Gear Solid's a lot more than just that, but I, I just 
I don't know. I want to see something like I just want to see something fun. That's why I picked the one I did. And I think God of War, though, that's a really good one because that's something we haven't seen in a long time. And I, I'm now that I think about it, I'm like, yeah, I want to see that. So I would I would rather go see God of War and every movie that we listed than Avatar. Yes, I agree. <laughs> I absolutely agree. Uh, let's move on to the trailers, though. We got some weird ones this week. Yeah, we do. Here are some exciting coming attractions from Boop. Trailers. Trailers by us. Did you watch all these, Ryan? Um, I watched John Wick. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not going to list them off. I'm sorry. I watched like. Oh, that's two. fine. Yeah, no, I watched. Like chapter four that we're going to talk about. There's yep. a movie called High Heat. There's a movie called The Machine. And then Fantasy Football, which out of all those, only one really stands out, right? It's uh, John Wick. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> John Wick chapter four, uh, which, I mean, it, it looks amazing from the trailer. It's. Uh, Actions on point. Um, the only thing I thought that was kind of weird, <laughs> it's just is is Keanu Reeves like delivery of things just getting more and more weird. Like there's a few lines where he's just like, "All right, I got a suit, but now I need a gun." <laughs> like, like he was just such a weird pause, and then. And then there's also like, and maybe it's just the dialogue of this film and he's doing the best he can. But there's also the other part where he's like, he's like, uh, do you think you're going to like see your, I'm paraphrasing by the way, by all this is, is do you see, think you're going to see your wife again? Right. And he's like, no, he's like, so then why do you, why are you even doing this? Why are you doing like this whole crusade? crusade? He's like, cause maybe, <laughs> maybe I'll see her. <laughs> Like, it's just, again, it's, it's odd dialogue. And, and I think that's kind of actually true for, like, the whole John Wick franchise. I mean, now that I kind of think about it, it's just kind of weird, right? It's, well, okay. John Wick, the first one was just such a, it was such an amazing movie. It was, it was something you haven't seen before. So it's like, what? This is everything I expected out of The Matrix and this and this and that. I'm like... This is the perfect Keanu Reeves movie. Then two came out, and I was like, yeah, you guys are getting a little over the top. And then three came out, and I was like, oh, my God, what the hell is going on here? And then the fourth one came out, or it's coming out, and I'm watching this trailer. I'm like, this movie kind of redeems itself. Like, it redeems itself as a franchise until I, I hold my reservation because I don't put it past them for adding something stupid and off the wall. I feel like they could throw a bat pot in this movie just because. Well. <laughs> and that and that's the whole thing like they had to i think keep on finding creative ways to expand the universe and to make it so that john wick can keep on uh fighting all these bad guys right, right, right. Then, you know like fighting all these other assassins pretty much and and, and this one it, like what he has to go to like the i don't know almost seems like the top dog and do a one-on-one -on -one fight and whoever survives you get your freedom that way. My Either way, was, he gets his freedom. How come? How come they haven't made a John Wick video game? Like this movie would play out perfect mm. in a video game. Yeah, let's go the opposite way. John Wick, you take a movie franchise and go to a video game, and I think yeah. that would be great. Oh, dude, that'd be so much fun! Just running around fighting assassins or people trying to kill you. You can have your bullet time from Perfect. the Matrix movie and Max Payne, and you can incorporate everything that made a perfect uh, Keanu Reeves movie and put it back in a video game form. And it's you can have motorcycles, car chase scenes. Yeah. Dude. John Wick 5 needs to be a video game. <laughs> uh, I hear you. Uh, Sony, Microsoft, pay attention. Whoever's hey. making video games, pay attention. <laughs> but Peter, back to your point about his um, his delivery. Keanu Reeves has always done that, dude. We've just accepted it. But does it, it seems worse though? Like, and maybe it's just maybe it's, it's because, just because it's the trailer. It. We've accepted we, it, so now he just gets to do it. Like, but if I accept it, though, that means 
<laughs> if I accept it, that means I don't notice it, right? But like I'm noticing it. But at the same time, like I'm sure if I go see it in the movie, I'm just going to be like, you know, kind of chuckle at it because it's they are kind of silly lines that he's saying. Like it's almost like he it's a little wink that he's like, I know this is kind of funny, but I'm going to say it anyways. (laughs) Watch DC League of Super Pets. His he has the delivery in Batman and it's perfect. Yeah, like he's he's a perfect like animated Batman um, now. But we're still in trailer, so we don't talk about the, that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, John Wick 4 trailer made me want to go see it. I do want to see this one. Like John yep. Wick 3, I didn't want to see it in theaters. I didn't care too much, but John Wick 4 and back. There's horseback riding. In 4? Was yeah. Four? Oh, yeah. The thing that I really liked is that there was there's a fight scene with swords and guns. So, yeah. I can't wait to see that. Again, they're just throwing everything into this and i don't know i i feel like i heard like this is it like this is the final one but you know how many times did they say that and like oh that made a lot of money let's do another one i just i mean they could do they could throw the kitchen sink at this one like they can have an underwater gun battle scene and it would be cool that's see again that might be number five. We're like, oh, dude, I got more ideas. We got to have a chapter five. We have to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Underwater gun battle would be a cool scene because you could do everything slow motion. And they could... That's totally a John Wick move. If that's not in four, it needs to be in five. Yeah. I feel like they've done that before, but I might be thinking it's just the Matrix because it kind of looked like it was underwater, you know? Yeah, like the bullets zooming on by. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. Well, that's John Wick Chapter Four. That's coming out next year in March. Um, this is a really stupid one, so this we'll touch base on it right now. Fantasy football. That one looks stupid, dude. <laughs> like I, I just saw the title and that got me excited because I'm like, I feel like oh. fantasy football is pretty big, you know? Or the league. Yeah. So that's what I was thinking. I thought it was going to be similar to like the league. And by the way, if you haven't seen the league, listeners, go watch the league. I believe it's on Hulu. Um, but this is like a children's movie where, uh, like the daughter gets control of like her father, who's actually in the NFL, um, uh, on a team running back, and he she pretty much gets to like control him as if he's a, a video game which maybe i don't know why they're calling it fantasy football just call it madden you know like uh yeah it's very just, misleading yes but holy crap did it look so dumb it's coming to paramount plus um and I, it was just so silly that i had to i had to put it down here because mostly just to make you watch it i don't even think you watched did you watch it i can't remember if she said that Right before this podcast. Oh, nice, nice. So yeah, mostly just to make you. <laughs> no, watch I, it. I have, I have watched this trailer before. Um, and now that you bring it up, I'm like, yeah, it, it's it plays like a video game. It's not about fantasy football whatsoever. It'd be kind of cool if there was like a dark side of this, where they so this team knew that she was controlling the players, and they were betting against it, and they were winning money off of her controlling she- them. She well, maybe she has her dad and her fancy team, and so he, she's doing that so that she can win and uh, you know, get that get that uh championship. <laughs> and I'm doing terrible in fantasies, but just like every real football team, they're doing terrible. This, dude, this is a weird year, yeah. Maybe all those uh crazy trades this past year weren't. All they were cracked up to be, obviously. Mm-hmm. Speaking of the Broncos, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, you, know, you, you got two more for me. Fill me in. Yeah. So, do you know Burt Kreischer? Mm-hmm. Personally. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. yeah. I'm on the podcast. I don't know what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> we slap. We slap bellies together. Yeah. Nice. So he he has this, uh, you know. Uh, part of his standup is this story that he tells about on a, I think like a Russian train and him, like 
getting caught up with the R Russian mob, I believe. Uh, everything I say, just remember I paraphrase everything. <laughs> and it seems like they made a movie that's slightly based on this. What? Yeah, called The Machine because The Machine is Burt Kreischer. And, and like, it starts off really weird, but, like, it actually looks pretty funny. Um, I ha There's not much, like, on this. Like, uh, I just saw, like, Burt Kreischer, he was, like, on Joe Rogan's show. He's like, dude, I got the trailer right here. Let me show you. And they just plopped it out, and, like, there it is. And I, I haven't heard a thing about this. And it looks like a legit movie. I, I don't, I hope it's not, like, a short it's not a short anymore. I don't think so. Uh, but it's him acting. And it looks like it's the the Russian mob is trying to come after him. And he's trying to escape. And there's silly fight scenes. And there's a moment where he starts puking. And he throws up in his hand and puts it in his pocket. Like, <laughs> like it just looks ridiculous. Um, and I so hope it is true. And it's going to be coming out you know, soon on some streaming service. I love that jokes or like joke trailers or joke movies or like a prank. They come out. We get what we want. Some, yeah, sometimes. Um, again, I don't know because it was such a weird movie trailer. Oh, and I think uh, um, Mark Hamill's in it. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this, all right, I just went to the IMDb page. It says, Bert's drunken past catches up with him 20 years down the road when he and his father are kidnapped by those Bert wrong 20 years ago while drunk on a college semester abroad in Russia. So that was like on the train. So like they're coming back after him. Uh, <laughs> and Mark Hamill plays... <laughs> apparently Bert's father <laughs> what yeah so again I hope this is real there is no release date on this so that's why like there's a lot of like weird stuff just around this and the way that the trailer came out and just how I feel like there's not much news on it and the fact that Mark Hamill's in it is involved is also just very uh, interesting as well. Um, so, yeah, the machine. If you haven't seen that trailer, go look. Type in the machine trailer because he also has a stand-up called the machine as well. So it gets a little bit confusing. Here's my favorite thing: is you look at Burt Kreischer's uh, Wikipedia, and this movie's not listed on there, right? On, under his name, but then you go to. Mark Hamill, Luke Skywalker himself, and it says the machine, Al Kreisner, post production. That's again, isn't all these things are just weird, right? Yeah. I can't tell if it's legit or not. Because you do get credits, like even if it is just a. Uh... Oh, no, it says a uh, post production on it. It's on it, it's in there for him, for Bert. And I like that the IMD page, IMDb page is like a photo of Mark Hamill. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, for the machine. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Whoever's doing this is doing a really interesting job. Like, it is just like, I don't know how you keep this such a secret, right? Like, unless I'm just in the wrong social circles where I've just, you know, haven't, no one's talking about it, but it really caught me off guard. And, uh, but, the trailer did what it was supposed to do and it made me excited to uh, uh, see this film. So I, I hope it's legit and it's coming out. And then uh, our last trailer, which uh, maybe I should have done this one right after John Wick because it's it's in the same uh, vein as John Wick where uh, it's called High Heat, uh, a chef at some restaurant who I believe is dating the, the uh, Don Johnson, which... I like John Johnson, um, but he's kind of old and the chick is kind of 
not old. <laughs> but it's the it's the typical thing. She is a chef, and you find out that uh, in her past life she was some type of like C CIA operative or or no no. And this one she's part of the KGB, and she since. Uh, left that lifestyle behind but that lifestyle has caught up to her and now she has to fight all these people all these assassins are coming after her I mean this is the new thing right like this is the new fab for these assassin movies is this type of deal where someone that wants to get out or has gotten out and gets sucked right back in you know we have John Wick we had the nobody uh Many other ones. Red, I would say. Come What's on. The one where um, dude was punched in the face. Um, nobody. The saw. nobody. Was it? Was it nobody? Yeah, the nobody. Yeah, it was fantastic. With the yeah, Christopher Lloyd. What's, too? Yeah. The nobody is that? What's this actor's name? Um, Saul. Bob yeah. Odenkirk. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. But uh, yeah, this is a new thing, and um, you know, I'm digging it. I'll see it. <laughs> hey, dude, if these are the type of movies that are coming out, they they understand what they are, and it's just um, just fun. It's like finally, movies have caught up with Evan. They just need to be fun. <laughs> That's right. They have caught up. We don't, we don't need to have like these incredible storylines or anything. We just need a fun cuz guess what? If the movie's fun, then we get John Wick 2, 3, yeah. 4 and but then Day there, Shift and yeah. Yeah, there's a little bit more to it. You got to be fun and also have to have some good action. Like you got to have decent action and and hopefully that's what High Heat actually delivers. But like the idea that she's a chef, you know, there's going to be tons of like I mean, you already seen the trailer fighting in the kitchen and her just using you know kitchen uh, items there to fight with so um yeah as long as they can pull off and do some decent action like yeah it will be a fun movie and and i'll be thoroughly entertained so um whenever that comes out we'll take a look i'm curious to see because the main actress is olga karlenko Carlinko, I don't know how to say that, but she is cask mask cask master in um, Black oh, Widow. Black Widow. Oh wow! Yeah. If she, I mean, I don't know if she was actually in that costume doing those stunts, but if she was, then uh, I think we're in for a treat. Then. Oh, she's perfect because she was in Quantum of, Quantum of Solace, so she's a Bond girl too. Wow, okay, she's so she's an action star. Okay. Yeah. Then I, I think this is going to work out nicely. I, yeah, now I'm excited. So now I'm excited. Yeah. Well, well, uh, three out of the four look like pretty entertaining movies. So go fuck yourself, fantasy football. <laughs> <laughs> and and my actual fantasy football as well. Yeah. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> oh man, uh, Peter. Uh, yes, it's that time. I remember to switch the titles. Is in a cruncher. News. <laughs> News. Ryan has eyes. Eyes. Oh yeah. <laughs> the, the paper's crumbling. <laughs> uh, hey Peter, uh, um, we put, we put these notes in before this happened, but I just want to say rest in peace to Batman. Oh yeah, Kevin Conroy. He's been um, ill for a while, man, and he, yeah, he passed. So he passed what, my um, on the eleventh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I yeah, I forgot and, about and that. Gallagher, Gallagher both died on the same day. Yeah, that was weird. Veterans Day, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. My grandma's was... birthday. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's odd. Um. But yeah, they'll um, rest in peace. Like that is sad. Like I mean, I think when you think of like Batman's voice, I mean, I like that's who you think of. So um, yeah, if you close your eyes and and they played all the different Batmans, like I would get Christian Bale and Kevin Conroy. I'd be like, those two are Batman. Yeah, yeah I agree. Because mostly Christian Bale, because he goes, oh Batman, oh, Batman. yeah, yeah. Everyone like, else, he was, 
they're just them, you know? Like, I get Val Kilmer out of Batman. I get George Clooney just being George well, Clooney. Well, because none of them actually changed their voice. I mean, literally, I think their whole gimmick was this, I'm just not going to talk that much. Or when I am talking, I'm just talking to the villain. So it's fine. Uh, and then, like... Michael Keaton would be a good one, though. Yeah, but I don't think I... I don't picture his... Or I don't think of his voice. Like, And I don't know if that's just because... He did the animated series, you know, Kevin did. And that's why, like, that's what I think of because it's, you know, it's so much more, I guess, audio. But no, it's visual, too. I don't know. He was the best, and he will be missed. He is Batman's voice, then Christian Bell, and then Beetlejuice. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So rest in peace, Kevin Conroy. And um, speaking of him, uh, Mark Hamill, Hamill was sad because he was the Joker. So maybe this post put a little uh, delay on the machine. We don't know. Well, I just made that up. production so. <laughs> Breaking news that <laughs> Ryan made up. <laughs> Ryan just made something up. Um, rumor has it that Tom Holland, Tobey Maguire, and Andrew Garfield uh, may be in Spider-Man Across the Universe. Yeah, I heard that. Like, I mean, it makes sense, but my guess it would be like quick cameos, right? I don't think it would be, uh, you know, like the main story or have them, you, you know, like I just, I feel like that'd be too much. We already seen that, but same time, I wouldn't put it past Sony because they're all about that money grab. I, um, yeah, I mean, out of the three, who would you want to be in the movie more? Like as a like a main character, yeah, yeah. So like, say like Sony's like, hey, we're gonna show all three of them, but like this one is follows around Miles Morales in a certain way. Oh man, uh, that's a. I, I mean, honestly, like what I want to go to is none. I really, I want it to be separate things. You know, okay. you got, you got, uh. Chris, uh, Phil Lord and Christopher Miller, Miller doing this, you know, uh, and I hope they have full control and Sony's not going to try to middle with it. Like, and I think that's the way to go. You let them be and they're going to put out something fantastic and they'll do it. If it makes sense to have those people in there, um, you know, I guess if I, there's so many ways you can go. If you went with those characters, like Tom Holland's fun because of, how he is but i feel like he's almost a little bit too much like miles morales so like he'd just be like yeah. the same character so i don't know if i really want that and then uh andrew garfield i don't know i never really liked him as spider-man so i'm not picking him so i guess it's toby i think especially the old the old toby version i think would be fantastic where he could be somewhat of a mentor and kind of maybe take that uh uh jake johnson role but is Jake, do you know, is he coming back? Yeah, Jake Johnson. Okay, so I'm glad you mentioned him because I think Toby Maguire and Jake Johnson would have really good banter together um, in this movie. Yeah, I can see that. Like th those two would be uh, really fun to listen to because it's animated. My, uh, my thing is, uh, my question, my question, Peter, is yes. if they put them in there, they should do something where they do them live action. Oh, like they go, mm, that'd be interesting. Like Miles can like do a Roger Rabbit kind of thing, live action. And that way it could be quick and out of the way. Yeah. You know, because if you have like Tom Holland, like helping Miles Morales, you got to have him be, be kind of animated. Now, the other thing is uh, Disney has that animated series coming out. For Spider-Man? Uh, yeah. So yeah. I wonder if they'll put him in there oh dude they also have to put the 93 spider-man character in there yeah i oh man i don't know that's a tough one because you also then now you're gonna make it so that disney plays nice with more than just the uh, the live action marvel stuff with sony oh, so <laughs> yeah true i forgot the um peter the other spider-man series that came out on mtv that was a good one yeah that right after uh uh, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man came out, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was pretty good. 
Uh, I don't know. I think no matter what, though, I think it's in good hands, and uh, I'm excited for across the the Spider Verse, which we don't get the first one until next year, right? Yeah, I think it comes out like June, maybe. Mm, okay, it's coming out June second. Yeah, and it's gonna be two parter. So, uh, Scoop Two apparently canceled, but they still finished it. I don't know if that was wise. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, they can just back pocket it. They could be like, hey, guess what? Well, <laughs> I I read the article and like, like, I almost feel like they weren't supposed to finish it. So like somehow either it was already paid for or or they found more funding to get it done or they thought, hey, we're close enough. Let's just finish it. Either way, it doesn't sound like Warner Brothers has any intention of like releasing this because again, that's more money to to get it out to theaters to market it. Like it's just like it doesn't make sense. So the fact that they finished this is just so odd to me. Um, I don't know. You think it's gonna actually? You you think you're gonna see this at some point? I think so. You and think so? I think Warner Brothers is going to do this whole like Justice League with a bunch of stuff. Like, hey, guess what? We have all this stuff on the shelves. Release the Scoob version. Yeah. Um, the first, the first Scoob was a good show. Movie. The movie. movie. I, it was all right. It was okay. I, I mean, it, it just it it does well because it's the kids, man. The kids go and they soak it up, and I can see them trying to like, all right, it's finished, we own it. Let's try selling it off to something, get some a quick buck, you know. Re re try to recoup what we put into it, you know. Potentially, I I don't know. I it just they're very much into like we need to focus, and their focus is not on this animated scoop movie. So, um, I don't know if. if if somehow it does come out, I don't think it's going to come out until, I mean, it's, it sounds like it's a holiday haunt. So it's a holiday movie. So maybe next year, maybe, maybe it wasn't year. ready for Christmas this year. Maybe not. Yeah. So or maybe, maybe that you said that and they are going to release it this year. Ooh. If, let me ask you this. If you were like the director and you, you had this movie pretty much done, you're like, Oh man, like, and it just got canceled. They're like, no intention of doing anything with it. it got canceled would you go and finish it and then on top of that which i think the answer is going to be yes would you then like secretly i would put it on the uh um like streaming services i would i would sell it put it on torrent sites and I'd let everyone just watch it for free that's what i would do i would leak it to the world if they canceled my movie i'd say fuck you i'm leaking this i would do that because it's the power of the internet. The internet has enough to either make or break something. Think about Deadpool. We got Deadpool because they released a um oh like that a, test footage, right? Test yeah. footage, yeah. That's the only reason we got Deadpool. Um we got the Snyderverse because the internet was like, Hey, make this better. Like we deserve a good Justice League movie. Um, they redesigned Sonic, like they put a movie in post production and to redesign the entire character, and I mean Mario. Mario teased us a little bit with uh, Chris Pratt to see what we can what we can expect and if it's going to be a flop or not. And they gave us just enough footage of it looking cool and badass, and just a little bit of footage of Mario talking where it's not like overpowering. You know, they're smart. They're they're going to back pocket this, but I was yeah yeah. I don't know if that's smart though with the whole Mario thing. I feel like that's kind of them being deceiving. We're like, we don't want backlash. <laughs> so, well, if they get back, it'll be Sonic all over again. Yeah, but can you imagine though? Like, you should do that right away. Like what Sonic did, dude. Like they released like a full trailer, and everyone's like, "What the hell?" And so <laughs> then they fixed it. So them releasing only a little bit of dialogue with Chris Pratt, like it's not enough to really gauge if it's going to be good or not. You know it's going to work so now you've got nothing really to like go off of to be like do we need to change this or not what's the audience reaction right now what i've seen i've kind of enjoyed but it's not because of 
Mario and Chris Pratt is because of everything else. Chris Pratt could ruin the whole movie. Which he will. Yeah, probably. He's going to do this with dinosaurs. <laughs> with the, the mushrooms, the toads. With, with, with uh, the Koopa Troopas, he's going to yeah. like, oh, dude, if they do a scene like that where all the uh, the Koopa Troopers are like surrounding him and he just like controls them with Mario style and shoots fireballs. Why yeah. am I not making movies? I don't know, man. You need to get in the biz. Uh, some more um, Warner Brothers Discovery News slash DC News. Blue Beetle is still going. It's not canceled. Uh, Weird. Okay. Set to release uh, August 18th next year. Uh, the other thing, though, and I, we touched base on this, Ryan, uh, when we're talking about uh, the new leaders of DC, you. Um, yeah, it's not DCECU or DCEU. It's DCU. Yeah. Yeah. It's just it's DCU. So, way to get rid of that E. Um, but yeah, James and, uh, James Gunn and Peter, uh, Sabon, right? Is that it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I heard this, this rumor, who knows how true it is. It's from a, um, giant freaking robot website, but there was a little news or a little rumor going around that they're going to kind of re change up Zach, the ending of Zack Snyder's man of steel. So, okay. They're going to Man of Steel 2, you know, because we all know that Henry Cavill's back as Superman. They're going to move on with that. Uh, but they're going to try to kind of change his origins a little bit where he didn't kill General Zod at the end of that movie. So not quite sure how they're going to do that. If they're just going to like quickly just brush over like, you know, I didn't do that. That was not real. Or, you know, kind of do what they did with the incredible Hulk where, you know, you just kind of ignore it, you know, you just kind of ignore it and, and kind of retell that first story, uh, and the opening scenes and just move on from it, you know, but they're already like, I was saying this, like, how are they going to try, how are they going to fix that universe? If they're even going to do it, or are they just going to scrap it and move on? But it looks like they're trying to fix it. <laughs> Dude, I have no faith in DC to do this because they haven't fixed anything. I will tell you, um, Marvel knows how to handle a situation like that. Just saying. Well, that's, that's what they did with Incredible Hulk. I mean, not not so much like changing, oh, we killed off, like we killed this person. But like they just kind of ignored the, f the fact that there was a first one and just kind of <laughs> like made like a brief intro stating like, Hey, this is what happened. You know, I, I'm I'm running from everyone because I'm I have a rage monster inside of me, and here we go. I mean, I don't even know if they touched base that like, uh, no, like he didn't. fought Nick Nolte, you know. <laughs> so, or there was no, there was no, um, Jennifer Connelly, uh, Betty, Betty, um, Betty Brandt was her name, I think. Ross. Betty Ross. Oh, yeah. Yeah, General daughter Ross. of Jen Ross. Yeah. Okay, well, think about Marvel. They have to do this. They've done it not only with the Hulk, but War Machine. They did it with... Uh, um, who else am I think? War Machine, the Hulk. Uh, they have to do it with General Ross. They have to do it with Black Panther. They know how to handle this, like, eh, we're going to recast someone. DC doesn't know how to do that. Uh, I feel like they haven't tried. They're going to recast the Flash, man. There's just no way. They should also recast Aquaman. No, it's it's no because they're they're pot committed. Like he's he's selling that film, you know. He's selling it. They should does like the Rock should get the rest of the Rock's family and have them be Aquaman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I just James and Peter has a long they have a long road ahead of them with trying to f fix this this you know dumpster fire that they got there with the DCU. Um, oh, I'm a liar, dude. DC's fixed. They've recast Batman like every ten years. Yeah, but not. They just announced a new series. 
That's true, but not in this universe. True. No, like not with the Snyderverse, basically. Well, now they ha- now they have a problem because we may or may not see Ben Affleck, Michael Keaton, or uh, Robert Pattinson. We don't know. No, they. In a, one article I just saw recently is that it's uh, seems like there's going to be two Batmans. There's Robert Pattinson's Batman and Ben Affleck. So they're still continuing down the path of like, all right, there's uh, the Snyderverse. And then there's also like, you know, these one off movies that they're doing. I want to so, know who Joaquin Phoenix Joker's Batman is. That's my guess is that there's not going to be a Batman because they just said there's not going to be four Batman. Like they're going to try to, you know, we don't need all these different people playing Batman, I guess is what they're saying. So, yeah. End of news. <laughs> End of news. <laughs> I almost feel like we need an outro for it. Just like, oh, man. <laughs> like a wrap it up kind of. Like they yeah. Do the <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh man, I like that one. Yeah, dude. Here we go. All right. Wait. Yep. Ryan. Peter. You know who supports us? Uh, They support our goods, our man goods. That's right. Manscaped. (laughs) Manscaped supports B movies and beyond, and we're so uh, happy to have them supporting us. Uh, our balls have never looked better and smelt better, uh, for that matter. The more you know. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and you know what? I want people to know that. I want people to know that when they look at me, they know that I'm confident and I feel good down there because Manscaped is taking care of my goods. And you know what else I like about Manscaped? What? They're boxers. Y- yeah. Yeah. Dude, like everything we got from them f- uh, for this has been incredible. The boxers are comfy. The shirt's nice. Like the all of it. It's just I've been saying this from the beginning, Ryan, is that they make some high quality products on your skin and touching your skin. So the wipes, the creams, the razors the boxers all of the above everything just feels good when you use manscaped products yeah uh the lawnmower 4.0 uh i love that thing i love the little light on it uh it's waterproof take that bad boy right into the shower uh and and trim those little pesky pubes away no one likes a messy downstairs (laughs) nobody does and the ladies appreciate it so thank you and That's right. Just so know your two hosts from um, B Moves and Beyond are not only fresh up here, but we're fresh down here. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, you can get 20% off and free shipping with the code BEYOND20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code BEYOND20. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. I know, I, know I do. Me too, man. <laughs> I, dude, right after I'm done using that, I just walk around like I own the place, you know? Well, it is my house, so I do technically own it. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> so, thank you, Manscape. Thank you. Reviews. Buy us. That's right. Uh, Ryan, why don't you take it away? Because I also watched your movie. Ooh. I was actually... You beat me. So we both made notes, just a little behind the scenes. We both made show notes for this episode. I don't think we either of us knew that we were each creating our own. <laughs> and I didn't... On my own notes, I didn't even write down the movie I watched. But it was weird. And and then I go to your notes and yours was more uh, you have a little bit more information. So I was like, shit, Ryan wins this <laughs> one. So you get to talk about weird. The Al Yankovic story. Well, for first and foremost, uh, we were talking about Burt Krishner's uh, movie. And that's one of those things where like, I hope this gets made. Weird was one of those movies like they they're like they were talking about making a weird Al movie. And you're like, 
I would watch that. And then out of nowhere, they're like, well, by the way, Harry Potter, Daniel Ratcliffe is going to be Weird Al Yankovic. Yeah. Well, they did a, a, a sketch of it on Funny or Die. Yes. And these are yeah. the creators uh, from Funny or Die who did this movie. So, yeah. The sketch led, it deadpooled itself. So my favorite thing about this movie is I, I didn't. I didn't know all that, you know. I didn't know that this was all funny or die. I thought it was going to be a a weird owl. Yeah, like a real. Yeah. yeah, same here. So I'm same sitting there here. watching this movie, and I'm like, "Hold on, hold on, this isn't true." Like it, every every scene of this movie, it's just, it just gets more and more dumb. Okay, this is one of those movies where you just got to watch it anyway. His dad, like is this abusive father, but never abuses him, but he wants him to work at the factory. And he's like, what's the factory? What do you do at the factory? He goes, well, yeah, it doesn't matter. You just work at the factory. And dude, when, when the Thomas Lennon comes in as the uh, accordion salesman, yeah, I I had to start looking up like information about weird Al. Like, I think it was like a musical instrument, like not just an accordion salesman, but like, like his dad beats up the salesman and the mom's just like, okay, I guess we'll buy one, but don't ever let your dad see you playing the accordion, okay? Yeah. And then he becomes this closet accordion player and like going to parties and stuff. And dude, who has a party for a uh, polka party? <laughs> you mean you've never been to a polka party before? <laughs> no, but I love how like it played out where everybody was cool and they're playing polka music and he was just like, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. And then he just yeah. becomes this like amazing accordion player and has to hide it. And like when he comes back to his his uh his house and his parents are like, "Oh, you use a hey dude or a hey buddy or something." And so this movie just gets really ridiculous and it as it progresses it gets more and more ridiculous. I think the best part of this is Weird Al's in it. And mm-hmm. he's the record producer who's like that idea is stupid. We're never giving you any money. And then the fake Weird Al comes in and is like, by the way, I made my own original song. <laughs> He's like, give him money. Like, it's all this whole, like, back and forth. And this movie's brilliant, dude. Like, it's it's self-aware. Harry Potter is Weird Al. He plays it well. The, the music is... You gotta co- go back to certain scenes where, like, there's a pool party and and they're like, sing a song right now. And who's there? It's like Andy Warhol. Like, And these are celebrities. So Conan O'Brien is Andy Warhol. And you see this group of like other cameos. Jack Black was the main guy too, right? Yeah. Yeah, Jack Black was in there. So as I'm talking about this review, that's how this movie is. It's like all over the place. But it comes together at the end. And Weird Al just dies. Uh yes, spoiler. <laughs> I mean, I was like, "What?" I'm not gonna tell you how, but but I mean, dude, just the, the dumbest things about this, where he was just dating Madonna. Did he ever date Madonna? No, no. And he, and here's the thing: this is what you always have to keep in mind. And I don't know why. Like, I knew it was gonna be goofy, but I didn't know it was gonna be like this goofy but in a good way when i say yeah. goofy and the whole time i was like what is going on like i don't think this is true events that happen in his life and then like i was just thinking about what weird Al did with his career like do he was doing parody songs and i was like oh it's a fucking parody movie of, parody of his of, life a, a, well yeah parody of his life but also a parody of 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 a musician's life you know and like those movies that they made like it's mm-hmm. all those weird things and and it just totally makes sense the way they went like you know they took little aspects of him like yeah what he did is he took parodies of, of people's songs and he became famous from that and and just from being so weird and that's what they just kept on pushing that like and i i love like the opening part where they're all down at the dinner table. He's, you know, Weird Al's super young, and and he starts like singing a song, uh, but he changes all the words. And the dad's like, "What the hell are you doing? That's not the right lyrics." Like, <laughs> I know, I made it better. And then like the mom goes, "Like, we think it's 
best for you in your best interest to um don't do the things that you like and not be you <laughs> like, just, like his parents did such a good job of being these like portrayed as this evil parent but not really doing anything really bad you know like they would say really off-putting rude things but you're like wait a minute like it makes you yeah. think like, is that bad parenting or is she just being well, like, sarcastic? The, the, yeah the mom was like still loving i mean the father was supposed to be kind of like the <clears throat> kind of abusive and the one that's like no you know you're not good enough like character like which it a lot of the stuff is kind of common in in, you in know, those movie yeah yeah, yeah. musician movie biography yeah yeah it's so the I phone just, call the phone call with his mom hey what does dad think well your dad <laughs> <laughs> he still thinks what you're doing is dumb but he understands it and i don't need to tell you about what he thinks about the court <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this movie is great, dude. I mean, it is. It is so good, and it's on Roku. You do have to suffer through some commercials, but uh, it wasn't bad. Like I, it didn't take me away from it because of uh, just how the movie flows. Like it's just, and, and it's so odd that you come back from a commercial, and they're just like into a new, you know, weird thing that is. It's totally you know somewhat related but really it doesn't matter like they're almost like little skits you know yeah this is a perfect movie to put on like regular broadcast television because mm -hmm. you can go to like you said you can go to a commercial break and come right back into it and you haven't missed anything you know you're just they're adding so much more value to this parody yeah as it goes on my 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 favorite thing about this is why why this movie intrigued me so much is Weird Al actually encouraged fans who can't get Roku to go pirate his movie. So, I mean, you said it. If you were a movie a director and, and Warner Brothers scrapped your film, but you finished it, you would go release it on torrents. Yeah. Weird Al's basically saying the same thing. But dude, that's what's so good about him is he was one of those like guerrilla marketing guys and and like he was just a parody, so he got away with it, dude. Yeah. You know, he I, he, he made that one that original song, Just Eat It, and had Michael Jackson copy that. That's so crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I with <laughs> Again, when that happened, I was like, I, I still, the, the, the idea that this is a parody still hasn't crossed my mind yet. And so in the movie, they're claiming that he comes up with the original song, Eat It, before Beat It. And then they like make an announcement like, oh, uh, Michael Jackson just released a movie called Beat It. <laughs> I love what, how uh, Dano Reckless like, response about eggs <laughs> like, like is it about eggs <laughs> and then he just gets so upset like we're great everyone's gonna think that i did a parody of beat it from michael jackson when this is the original song he's just so pissed off <laughs> and then he goes to like on stage and like they try to give him a, a michael jackson jack he's like no no i'm <laughs> <laughs> and dude what better actor to play this this is i was thinking about this like the rock is always a rock ryan reynolds is always ryan reynolds in his movies but daniel radcliffe is so good at being his character doesn't oh, yeah. matter what he's in he's so good at being his character dude and, and i could still see harry potter but like i'm he's weird al to me you know well and he wasn't like it wasn't like they casted him because like oh look it he looks like weird al that wasn't the point. It was just like, and they also like made him. I apparently he made him like work out all the time because he had to be buff. Like, yeah. and he was kind of ripped. Like he, that was the purpose. He's like, no, we don't want you to be like. This is the parody, so you need to be someone different. But you're just gonna have the wig and the mustache, and it was hilarious. Yeah, uh, so well, dude. I I loved it, man. Like, 
I'm I'm curious like if it was ever like if it was actually released in the theaters if it would have done well. Like I, I think streaming was the right way to go. Uh you know, maybe not necessary Roku, but like streaming being released on the streaming services was was I think perfect for it. Like this is just one of those weird niche movies uh, uh but it's it, it was amazing and I love all the cameos. So you just got to go into it knowing this is a parody of a musician's career and none of it's true. <laughs> do, do you really have to go into it like that? Or can you like bomb, like surprise bomb someone with this? But like, dude, you got to watch this weird out movie. It's super good. And then halfway through, you'll get our reaction. Like, what the fuck is going I, on? I don't. Well, because I think there's some people that will be pissed off. knowing like this didn't happen. <laughs> Like the another great part, did you listen to the 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 song at the very end, the whole credits? Mm -mm. Maybe Dude, I gotta go back and l listen it, to that. It's weird out, man. And I think it's probably actually an original song because it's just him going and like like talking about the movie. Like, this is a parody of my life, and like it just explains the whole movie in this parody song. <laughs> like perfect. Yeah. See you now gotta, I need to go back and watch that again because I want yeah. to hear that. That's what this movie's done to me. So go listen to it. it. It's it's pretty funny because it just recaps everything and it explains the whole movie, really. So I don't know. I it, it's amazing. If I think if people have not seen it, it's totally worth a watch. And it, it's it's weird and funny. It's it's everything you would expect from a Weird Al movie. So it makes me Could more. You if they made it serious. If they made it serious. Oh. Yeah, like I don't even think it'd be good. Well, but I mean, that's the whole. I think that's the thing, right? Like they were playing it off as s serious, right? They're just put into really stupid scenarios and the things they were doing, but it wasn't like they're. Oh man, I, I guess I know what you're saying. It was. Uh, uh it wasn't serious. You're right. <laughs> It wouldn't have worked if it was solely serious. But how do you do a type of movie like yeah. that? You can't. They so. did it, and it sucked. It was the Elton John movie. No. Oh, like, are you saying, like, serious as if they really just did his whole movie? Like, his life? Like, really what it was like? Yeah. 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 I, I mean, I liked Rocket, man. I thought it was okay. I mean, it's not the... the yeah, but you can't one. plug in that Weird Al and have him do that. Yeah, especially because I don't think he had some of those issues. Like the probably the worst thing that happened to him was like his parents died from uh like CO poisoning. Like they were like putting it they're doing their fireplace and like the, the flu wasn't open, and so they died from the uh carbon monoxide poisoning. Oh wow. Yeah. See, like, yeah, like this and then he, so much made up stuff. Yeah, and they don't they don't touch base on they don't touch on that. <laughs> so no, but he's an alcoholic in this movie. Yeah, which I don't think he was ever an alcoholic. Like, dude, the guy is like like kind of he's kind <laughs> of a sweetheart, man. I think that's the best thing about it, is like he just made himself to be this like cocky alcoholic womanizing dude, and Weird Al's not that dude whatsoever, you know? No, no. I just like I'm reading some of these quotes and there's in on IMDb and there's like so many more that I was just like, they weren't even on here. So I was paraphrasing uh, like, like here's one um, from weird, weird also says you, you think you're going to stop me from playing. You'll see one day I'm going to be the best. Well, perhaps not technically the best, but arguably the most famous accordion player in extremely a specific genre of music. <laughs> like that's, that's the line. Like it's just, it's fantastic. Oh man, man. I remember the delivery and it was perfect. Yeah. I need a, I, talking about it. It makes me want to rewatch it, man. It was so good. That's how, you know, it's a good one. Sorry. Yeah. Got, got a needy buddy over here. Oh, it's okay. I drew. All right. Um, I watched Beast um, with Idris Alba. Oh, I think we saw a trailer for this, right? 
Yeah, we did a trailer, and this is where he goes to Africa and uh, a wild lion attacks him. Just and like I'm getting attacked right now. <laughs> yep, basically, pretty much. It's it was like what Trey was doing. Um, I I so this is on Peacock now. That's why I saw it. I never saw it in the movie theater, which I'm I'm kind of glad I didn't. Uh, you know, it, it's it's somewhat of a. I mean, kind of crazy movie. Like it's, I'm surprised this was made. Let me put it that way. This is just so kind of far out there, and that Idris Alba is the main character fighting a lion is just so weird, and and they're so good at acting, yet, like the f the fighting of the lion and and the the digital effects of the lion, just like it, it wasn't it wasn't quite there and it, I think it takes you out of this movie. Mm, so good. yeah. So Idris Alba, it, it, he is uh, the father, uh, him and his two teenage daughters, they go to Africa um, uh, because they're, they're his kind of separated wife and their mother passed away. Uh, I believe from cancer. Um, and so now this is kind of like, and she was from Africa. So they're going to Africa to kind of like uh, get a sense of her, who she was and where she grew up. Um, and they, uh, they join up with, um, oh man, what's the guy that does all the, pretty much anything that's shot in Africa or has anything to do with Africa. He's in those movies. Char, Charto Copley? Charito Copley? Charito, sure. The actor who's in District Nine. Yeah, District Nine. All those movies with uh, um, that Neil Blomkins does. Yeah, that guy. He's in it. That's like uh, his buddy. They're visiting him, and he's like a um, director for like this uh, wildlife reserve, and um, you know. Uh, he's showing them around and showing the animals. And like, there's this one wild uh, male lion that's just going around and like wiping out like whole villages. He's just like, he's like a rabid lion. Um, and then uh, as they're going on their little tour with the whole family, uh, they run into this lion and it's, you know, them battling this lion uh, from then on there out. And, um, I, I, the thing I liked is that they actually like Idris Alba actually gets kind of jacked up by this line quite a bit, but to the point where like, all right, I know he's a hero, but do you really have to get him attacked? Like, does he have to get attacked by the lion? Like so often, like you have all these other people where the lions just wipe him out like instantly, right? They're just, you know, they're the side character. So they're just getting killed instantly. Yet Idris Alba, he can always just go and like actually fend off the line even though he's not a fighter he's a doctor like like all this stuff and they keep on going back that he's you know he's just a doctor he doesn't he's not the best at using a gun he's not the best at this but like for whatever reason the lion can't kill him <laughs> so uh it was some of those like weird things that just takes you out of this where like you know i I wasn't always able to suspend disbelief in this movie. Mm. You know, when they do it like super well, you're just totally into it and, and you don't care. Right. Cause it's just, it's either so entertaining or just so goofy and done in a way that you're just on board. And this one is just like, it, it was so unbalanced with like, like I said, like how, Idris Alba was just always escaping and just barely kind of getting a couple scratches on him. And then the lion was just like, ah, and like biting the heads off of everyone else. Like it just doesn't make sense. It's funny to put a contrast <clears throat> to these two movies. This is a movie with Idris Elba, who is supposed to be like in, he's the black Superman in, in fast and furious. He's, uh, He's this badass in every movie that he is, but they try to portray him as a doctor who is fighting this lion. Meanwhile, we're watching a movie with Daniel Radcliffe, who is playing Weird Al Yankovic. And the Weird Al movie, you're not, like you said, you're in that movie. 
like you're not what'd you say suspended in disbelief like you can believe yeah. that this movie happened even though it's a complete parody but this beast movie you're like come on he's not a doctor well it wasn't so it wasn't that it's was like come on he should have been dead yeah you know, a long time ago <laughs> you, it's you like, know, uh, like... It's with leo dicaprio the revenant yeah the revenant one bear scene that's all you needed you know yeah exactly and that was that was nuts like uh, you know, but that wasn't the purpose of that movie. It wasn't, you know, there was a lot more to the revenant than just the bear, but yeah, this was just, you know, him fending off a lion and, uh, it's just, it, I wish it was puppets instead of CGI because mm. every, you, it was so they, they really try to go far with it where you see the people interact but it was so odd where like it almost it turned even them into too much CGI where you just had this weird mixture and it just didn't it didn't look right. And so every single time that happened, you, you were just like, uh, you know, again, you're taken out from the movie because of that that part. Like when they're like on their own and not interacting with anything, like I thought like the CGI was pretty decent but as soon as they're interacting and they did a lot of this in this movie because i think they felt like oh dude this is the best cgi ever and, and we're totally pulling this off but no you did not pull it off and you probably should have uh uh scaled that back a little bit more done a little bit more trickery with the camera and and maybe use some puppets for your lions to actually get in those close shots and interaction with uh your actors so um you know all in all it's uh you know it's entertaining enough just be warned that you know the cgi is you know especially when they're interacting is is not that good but i will say you know like unlike the gray where they're just kind of building up and building up we're like oh shit this guy's gonna really fight this these wolves and then that's the end of the movie you get to see Idris Elba fight a lion. So okay. there's that. <laughs> so if you're into that, check out Beast. It's on Peacock. Nice. Yeah. Uh, based off your review, I think I might watch the Weird Al again. <laughs> <laughs> that is the you know the more fun movie. I will say Weird Al is the better movie. Hey, so, Peter. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, oh God. God. Oh. I don't know what she's having. What are you having, Ryan? Oh, what am I having? I Oh, it came back. I gotta do it every November. Have you watched it? What? I don't know what's happening in November. Yellowstone. No. <laughs> not watch that I just, i've been seeing tons of ads during football for it that the two-hour event was i think the other night um no i have not watched any of it so sorry it's very good did you watch the two-hour event yeah <laughs> nice <laughs> um i heard that tulsa team with uh stallone is pretty good too so might might tap into that a little bit it's made uh, by the same people right yeah yeah so Taylor, uh, Taylor, Tyler Sheridan, he's just cranking away at some whatever he can at this point in time. He's throwing shit out of wall to see what sticks. And Yellowstone shit worked. So he's going to be like, yeah, if Tulsa King works, cool. He did Mayor's, Mayor Kingstown, which I heard was good, but like I didn't follow it. So, oh, yeah, with the uh, hot guy. Yeah. Yeah, so, I wanted to watch that. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's Yellowstone season. Nice. It's a crazy show, dude. I, I if you haven't watched it, like, it's one of those things where you get invested in it and you're like, "Holy shit!" Like, is life in Montana this awesome? Because I want to move there. Hmm. Uh, well, oh, I, I need to give it a shot, but it's almost it's a little bit too much just knowing that there's so many seasons already. And what are they on five now? I have no idea. <laughs> I guess I don't even know how many seasons, but it's just too much to catch up on. But I hate that day. feeling. You know, like every time you talk series with people, everybody has their series, you know? So like the the one that for the longest time for me was like, oh, you need to watch Power. Dude, Power has like 94 seasons. I'm not watching it. Like, 
Yeah, that's too much. It's it's just it, if I there's just sometimes, man, you miss it, and they made so many because it is successful, but it's it's too much because I you know I missed it and now I don't want to recap it. It's, it's just it's too much. Ain't no um, for that. Yeah, I. <laughs> This is kind of funny though. I kind of goes the opposite way though. Is I never watched Key and Pill, which they had a few seasons, right? I said, bitch. <laughs> yeah. I just I would see little like clips on YouTube. Um, but like a couple seasons are on Netflix now, and and it's like the perfect thing just to kind of put on like you know, like when the baby's not sleeping, dude. This is what I put on, and it's it's you can start whenever you want. You can start in the middle of the episode. It doesn't matter, and you'll get some chuckles from it. So that has been my like go-to like show right now, just to put on because I'm awake with a cranky baby, and and that makes me happy. So, Key and Pill. I fun. love I love Key and Pill because I feel like it was a spiritual successor to Mad TV. Uh. Yeah, I get that. I feel that vibe. So awesome, Peter. Well, dude, it was a good episode, my man. It was fun times, man. Sorry. Yeah, last week didn't work out. We get, everyone was sick at my house, dude. It was hey, it's going week. around as long as if we are not getting vaccines for it, I'm good to go. So, <laughs> so far, no vaccines for it. Be man. well at the uh, uh, the Peter family house. Thank you, buddy. Uh, until next time. Pew pew out. Pew out. Nice.